Okay, so we've looked at the movement of an, uh, a dislocation to cause plastic deformation in the metal. Uh, what I'd like to do now is look a little bit at the uh, stresses in the lattice surrounding a dislocation so we can better understand uh, what this linear imperfection is, okay? It's going to be good. All right, so here we go. I've got a, a simple uh, cubic lattice. It's perfect. So what I want to do is I want to introduce a dislocation into it. Now, this is not actually the way that dislocations are created, but in terms of understanding the residual stresses in the lattice around a dislocation, this will get us there. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to consider what if we added into this system and this little extra um, extra row of atoms, okay? And you can imagine this coming out of the page as well if you wanted to see it in three dimensions. So we're going to add this in and we're going to slice it into, into this cube. We're going to push it down like that. Okay, that's what I'm doing. I'm just pushing that down into the lattice there. <clears throat> and so then you can see, well, it's taking up some space in the lattice. Okay, it's taking up some space in the lattice. It's almost like, um, you know, if you, uh, this is going to stretch my artistic abilities, but if you wanted to cut a, a, a log or something, this is a piece of wood, right? Can't you tell? Um, that's a piece of wood. And if I wanted to cut that, say I wanted to cut that with, a, I'm going to give myself a bit of room here. Uh, I want to cut that with, what am I going to cut it with? I'm going to cut it with an axe. Okay, so what does an axe look like? An axe looks like this. Okay, and then there's the handle of the axe. And what are you going to do? Right, you're going to spin that down, and it's going to, it's going to hit this wood like that. Okay, now if you've ever done that, you might know that what happens is the sharp edge of the axe hits the um, hits the surface of the wood, okay, and you know it creates a, a crack. It pulls the wood fibers apart, okay, and that's what I'm trying to draw right here. This is the surface of the wood where where it's starting to crack, <clears throat> and the the axe drives in there and it takes up some space. And so what does it do? Well, it it pushes here. It, the axe itself, if I were to draw the axe in, say, with the green color, okay, maybe this is a green axe, I'm not quite sure why, but let's say it was a green axe. Well, the green axe blade has some volume here, okay? And so what's going to happen is it's going to apply a force to the wood, and in fact, it's going to compress the wood here, this is the same as if you cut, uh, you know, you cut a piece of cheese or firm tofu or something like that. You know, especially you know, cheese, if it's a bit sticky, if you've got a really fat knife and you're trying to cut, it sticks to the blade and it pushes against it. If you want to cut uh, cheese with ease, you can use a, a thin wire and slice it right through. There's no edge to drag against it. So this blade here is compressing. It's causing the the wood to be in compression. But then what you also might know is that ahead of the blade. So in fact, even if the blade of the axe is right here where I've drawn it, what you'll notice in the wood, because the wood is being pressed apart, uh, pulled apart by that, there's a crack. And the crack actually advances down into the wood ahead of the blade. So that tells us, in fact, that the wood is being placed into tension. Okay, And so now if we return to our dislocation, the reason I went through that whole exercise with the axe is I want you to appreciate the residual stresses in the lattice due to this dislocation. So th these four atoms here, they're going in and out of the plage. We often refer to it as, um, <clears throat> as an extra half plane. Not a half, sorry, plane. Let me write that out more neatly. Sorry about that half plane. Okay, we refer to that as a half plane of atoms. Well, what it does is it takes up some space. And so I went ahead and I drew that in uh, ahead of time. So what will happen is it pushes the lattice apart like that. It's pushing the lattice apart to take up space. And so these atoms down here are actually being pulled apart. I didn't really illustrate that uh, entirely, but the lattice is in tension down here. They're being pulled apart. And I think what you can see up above the dislocation is that these are all in compression. Okay, so there's compressive stresses above the dislocation, um, or above the tip of the dislocation. Sometimes we call this the dislocation line. Okay, that's the dislocation line. I'll give you that in the orange color, new terminology. Okay, 
Um, here we go. That's the dislocation line. So above the dislocation line, it's in compression. Below, it's in tension. And um, also, by identifying here that it's called the dislocation line, you'll see why this is a linear imperfection. So you see that blue circle I drew there. It's almost like a, it's like a little tunnel. There's a bit of extra volume in the lattice there. Above that, that little circle, there's an unsatisfied bond. There seems to be, you could call it a missing bond there, isn't there? Right? So if you drew this same image coming out of the page, and going back down into the page, you'd find that there was this row of missing bonds. And that defines the linear feature of a dislocation. That's why it's a, a linear imperfection. Now, this is actually specifically called um, an edge dislocation, Okay, to be completely clear. This is called an edge dislocation. I think it's the best one for illustrating the movement of a dislocation and the stresses in the lattice, all that stored strain energy. But there are other types of dislocations is a screw and a mixed dislocation and those um, they have a little different structure but they allow the dislocation to weave itself around through a crystal so dislocations are present in a huge huge quantity um, in materials and in fact the dislocation density just to give you a sense for just how many of these things there are if we take uh, one millimeter square a uh, little piece tiny little piece of a, of a metal we can have uh, a range um, anywhere from about 10 to the 4 dislocations per square millimeter up to on the high end 10 to the 10 dislocations per square millimeter on the high end that will be something that's um, heavily deformed really lots of plastic deformation okay and um, on the low end, this would be something that's been um, generally treated in the, in the furnace for a long period of time, uh, annealed. I think there's one L annealed. Um, anyway, um, it's been annealed uh, to, to relieve some of that stored strain energy. Okay, and those are concepts we can address a little bit later, but what I want you to appreciate is how many there are. There's a huge, huge number of these dislocations inside any piece of metal. All right, thanks.